BCY America presents Crosstalk, a nationwide call-in program discussing issues that have an effect on our families, our communities, our churches, our nation, and our world. Crosstalk, an opportunity for you to voice your concerns for biblical principles. And now live by satellite and around the world on the Internet at bcyamerica.org. Here is today's Crosstalk. And a pleasant good afternoon. Good to have you with us on Crosstalk today. Vic Elias and your host. And uh, behind the glass there, my good friend, Matthew Middlebrook, taking the calls and uh, handling all of the details behind the glass. Well, we have a number of items. This being Friday, we always try to clear off the desk with all of the interesting news stories that accumulate. Some of them are very short. Some of them are long. Some of them are rather trivial. Some of them are very important. And uh, But many of us have been tra- uh, watching the issue of the Trayvon Martin case. Well, it's interesting how Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton and all the others have kind of jumped into this, and even the President of the United States making statements that uh, appear to have uh, turned this thing from a a question of of right and wrong to a racial issue, and on and on it goes. Well, CNS News has a story. It says, inequities in the criminal justice system go back to the time of Jesus. That's a quote from... (laughs) From Al Sharpton, back to the time of Jesus and protests stemming from the Trevon Martin case, some of them led by Reverend Al Sharpton, were intended to right some of those wrongs, said Sharpton. We believe in Jesus. They crucified him and never had a charge. The Reverend Sharpton told a gathering of the National Action Network in Washington, D.C. on Thursday, they never charged uh, there was no crime on his indictment. Uh, so we've got to deal with the inequities of the criminal justice system. The fact that we, black people, are overly in, incarcerated. Uh, the fact that we go to court and are treated differently. And the fact that we have been victimized, there is no, not the same response. And so Mr. Sharpton has chosen to go beyond the issue of the rightness and appropriateness or wrongness of what o- occurred in the area of uh, the Trayvon Martin and uh, the man who has uh, been accused uh, of uh, the purpose for lethal force. But the issue, again, Sharpton said he would continue to fight Florida's stand-your-ground law, the self-defense statute that can be used in Zimmerman's defense. Now, the stand, uh, if, if I recall correctly, the Stand Your gr- uh, Ground Law does give authority to someone, if you're being challenged, that you may lo- use lethal force uh, if your life is being threatened or you deem it's being threatened. And the question is, is it going to be threatened with a baseball bat? Could it be threatened with uh, uh, a, a firearm? Could it be threatened with a knife? Could it be threatened with... Uh, so what constitutes lethal force is another question or a threat to your existence. Well, the issue, of course, has gone viral all over the world, and Al Sharpton has weighed in on it. It's interesting to see his response. Now, uh, we have a couple of other things. Uh, Over the years, I have had fellowship with people in the pro-life organizations. In fact, I consider myself a pro-lifer as well. And uh, there are those who get all upset when there are pictures, graphic pictures, of abortion. Now, I'm not for shock tactics, but there comes a point in time when, first of all, defining what abortion is, and number two, recognizing the personhood of the child being aborted. Now, There have been many that scream bloody murder every time they see one of these sign trucks go by with with a pro-life message defending the preborn and a picture of the results of abortion. Some say, oh, it's so shocking, it's so terrible. Well, put a name on it. Put a face on it. We as a nation ought to be ashamed up to our eyeballs for the, the, the issue that has gone on. Right up to our nose, right up to our ears. We ought to be ashamed because of allowing millions of little babies to be killed on the altar of the abortuaries. Now, WorldNet Daily reports this. Court protects graphic abortion images. 
The state Supreme Court in Wyoming has issued a ruling protecting the graphic abortion violence pictures and images that pro-life protesters use to shock people into a debate on the procedures used to kill the unborn in America. The ruling came today, that meaning uh, that was 13, well, let's see, how many hours ago? Well, at this point, uh, regardless of the time, the issue came through in a conflict between Operation Save America and the town of Jackson, which went to court without notifying the OSA, obtained an order that the pro-life organization could not exercise uh, members' First Amendment rights in parts of Jackson last year. A large part of the town's concern was the large photographs of disfigured and aborted fetus images. And according to a report from Jackson Police Lieutenant Robert Gillum, or Gilliam rather, <clears throat> the group has consistently demonstrated throughout the town <clears throat> of Jackson showing the same graphic photographs. The group has refused repeated requests from me, says the police officer, and other law enforcement officials to remove these graphic photographs. This came after police received several hundred phone calls, emails, personal visits, and face-to-face complaints from citizens who see the photographs as obscene and offensive. The city's ultimate, uh, the city's ultimately obtained uh, ex parte hearing where a judge issued a temporary restraining order silencing the pro-life message without notifying OSA. The ex parte order resulted in Reverend Chet Gallagher and Pastor Mark Hollick, two of the protesters ultimately being arrested for violating the order. The organization, whose members hail from a number of states, dispatched protesters to Jackson on May 2011 to raise awareness to the abortion clinic run by Mr. Brent Blue. Town officials were alarmed that Boy Scouts attending their 2011 annual Elk Fest in the same town at the same time might see the images. But the state Supreme Court found that just as speech on issues of public concern is protected, so are those images. We find that the ex parte temporary restraining order was issued in violation of the First Amendment to the United States Constitution and Rule 65 of the Wyoming Rules of Civil Procedure, the opinion said. The opinion explained that the First Amendment does not protect everything. Fraud, defamation, obscenity, and fighting words are not protected, for example. But it added speech on public issues or matters of public concern are classic forms of speech that lie at the heart of the First Amendment. Speech directed at abortion policy is public issue speech. Did I hear an amen somewhere out there? Good move on the court. That's my opinion. Well, let's move further. Talking about uh, the issue of Planned Parenthood, and uh, uh, or says someone once called it Planned Baronhood. Uh, Planned Parenthood sues to stop Texas from enforcing law. Now, this is interesting. It's posted by Carla Dial. And uh, here it is. Planned Parenthood filed a federal lawsuit against Texas today seeking to block it from enforcing a new law that bans uh, taxpayer funds from going to groups that perform abortions or their affiliates. According to the suit, if the law is enforced, it could deprive tens of thousands of low-income women seeking family planning and other preventive health services. My comment here, considering all of the illegitimate births, I'm not too sure how much planning is going on at Planned Parenthood. State state legislators passed the law in 2011 session seeking to uh, completely oust the abortion seller from the state Medicare program. Despite threats from the Obama administration, the state implemented the law in February. The Obama administration made good on its threat in March, shutting off the spigot of federal Medicaid funds to the Texas program. That block of $30 million makes up 90% of the state Medicaid budget. The federal government contends that Medicaid recipients must be able to choose their own qualified providers 
from those willing to offer services, a list which includes Planned Parenthood, and that excluding the gift makes the Lone Star State their law unconstitutional. Well, Texas Attorney General Greg Abbott, however, has not been cowed. He's leading the charge for the state, filing a countersuit against the Obama administration last month for cutting off federal funding over the issue. Federal law gives the state the right and the responsibility to establish criteria for Medicaid providers, so we're on firm legal ground, the members of the Texas Department of Health and Human Services wrote in a statement. We'll continue to work with the Attorney General's office to fully enforce state law and continue federal funding for the women's health program. Well, interestingly enough, you're seeing the battle continue, and Planned Parenthood is continuing. It's, in my opinion, if you put it this way, assassination plan and program for unborn children. Now, from LifeNews.com, Time Magazine, would you believe, is considering honoring Planned Parenthood president. Time Magazine is once again out with its voting process to establish another list of the top 100 most influential people in America, in American politics and public life. As uh, last year, Cecil Richards clocked in at the 69th most influential spot. She had been at a higher position, but a small campaign on Twitter led by some pro-life advocates like Brian Kemper of Stand True, helped lower her ranking as pro-life people were pursuant to the visit and to visit the Time website to declare the abortion mogul not influential. Well, this year, Life News is leading a campaign to prevent Richards from making the list. Before the campaign, which Life News started on Twitter and Facebook, a majority of voters responded to Planned Parenthood's call to vote for Richards to make the top 100. Now 63.68% of the voting people have said no way when asked if the head of the nation's biggest pro-abortion business should be included. Well, interesting. People are responding. People are saying things. And uh, very interesting indeed. Well, we've got more stories here that of interest. We're coming up here on the break, but By the way, tomorrow night, if you're listening uh, on the network, on the VCY network, Waleed Shubat will be on the air at 7 o'clock Central Time. It'll be coming live from the Waukesha Expo Center, which is a large arena. And we anticipate a full crowd there. We'll be broadcasting live and direct. And invite people to listen who may be a part of the network, but also, if you aren't, This man, who was once a terrorist and is now a follower of Christ, if you go to your website, which is vcyamerica.org, click on Listen Live, and you can hear it anywhere in the world. So we invite you to listen to Wally Chubat tomorrow night at 7 o'clock Central, coming to you live from the VCY rally. You'll find a powerful message about a man who once hated Jews and claimed to be an Islamic terrorist, but today loves the Jews and loves Jesus. We'll be right back. Back to Genesis with Dr. John Morris, creation seminar speaker at the Institute for Creation Research. Dr. Morris, is there a link between abortion and evolution? Chris, we've long noted this link. One of the standard arguments for evolution is that the baby in the mother's womb goes through various evolutionary stages. At one point, it's a fish with gill slits. And it's okay to abort a fish, but it's not okay to destroy the image of God in man. Surveys taken show that many women who have had an abortion eventually regret it, even though they might have thought that abortion was their only choice at the time. They wish there had been another choice. They don't necessarily support the radical pro-abortion agenda. I suspect there'd be a whole lot less support for abortion if people hadn't been indoctrinated in evolution throughout their lives. We need to get back to Genesis and start telling people the truth. To better understand the relevance of creation, visit us on the web at www.icr.org. That's www.icr.org.
And welcome back to Crosstalk. Uh, We've got some interesting stories here. This is the end of the week. Try to cover all of the loose ends that may have uh, come across our desk. And there are certainly a number of interesting ones. For instance, the Environmental Protection Agency has leveled fines of $438,000 in fines and mandatory environmental projects. On who? Some... Vicious corrupter? No. No, $438,000 in fines and mandatory environmental projects leveled on a school bus contractor for excessive idling. Letting the engine run. Now, these are kids in perhaps an area or environment where it's cold. I'm not too sure when this thing erupted. It says the EPA... Enforced nearly 500,000 in fines and mandatory environment, environmental projects on a school bus contractor for excessive idling and as a part of its anti-idling campaign to reduce the carbon footprint of school buses waiting to pick up children on their routes. As a part of the settlement for alleged excessive diesel idling in Connecticut, Massachusetts and Rhode Island Durham School Services will commit to reduce idling from its school bus fleet of about 13,900 buses operating in 30 states, read an EPA press release on Tuesday. And the EPA says that the agency inspector two years ago spotted buses of the Durham School Services, the school's largest school bus transport contractor in the country idling for extended periods of time in the school bus lots of New England. School buses. Folks, I believe lunacy has literally afflicted our planet. Good old EPA. Why don't they drive down the road and stop at every truck stop and find diesels sitting there idling as they keep the sleeper warm over the winter and the people who are running the truck simply idling to keep to keep the engines warm, sub-zero temperatures. I mean, compared to a school bus engine, these big diesels are cranking out carbon by the ton. Oh, but but that would be too much of an imposition on all these wonderful trucks out there. Now, I'm not I'm not against truck drivers, but if they want to go to where the source is. Go to the big engines and deal with it, if that, in fact, is a case. But you want to know the hypocrisy, and this this comes from me, okay? It's my opinion. I am an airplane pilot, and over the years, I have flown for 30 years. And as you apply the throttle to the engine, of course, there's a surge of power as you go down the runway, and those white lines start coming at you. And then as you your flaps are down, and as you begin to feel that you're at, at rotation speed. You bring back the controls and the airplane lifts in the air. Now, the, the exhaust pipe on the particular airplane I fly has two of them, one on either side. And they're about, oh, two and a half inches in diameter. And it's a 300 horsepower engine. And once you get airborne, of course, you lean it out and get at altitude and make sure everything is operating at the right propeller and RPMs and the whole thing. But that doesn't hold a candle to the carbon footprint of Barack Obama's 747, which belches out carbon by the ton, according to the scales of the EPA. Not even necessarily always for presidential purposes. From what I understand, even at Mr. Barack Obama's expense, he uses a giant airplane that costs $18,000 an hour to run as it belches forth exhaust fumes from kerosene-burning jet engines that spew it out by the theoretical ton. And we've got the EPA worrying about a school bus idling to keep the kids warm? <laughs> well, that's just my opinion, but I thought I'd sound off today. It says, by reducing the idling time of each bus in its fleet, by one hour per day, Durham would be reducing its fuel use by 1.25 million gallons per year and avoid emitting 28 million pounds of carbon dioxide per year. That's called a greenhouse gas that contributes 
to climate change. Somehow I thought that God controlled the wind. Even the winds in the seal bay. And remember those biblical stories? Well, let's move on. Enough for the EPA. They've been at it for some time. Now, if you want to hear something else that'll make you choke, shovel ready in San Francisco, $205,075 to translocate one shrub from the path of the stimulus project. You say, Vic, what in the world are you talking about? The government spent at least $205,075 to translocate or relocate a single bush in San Francisco that stood in the path of a of the 1.045 billion with a b highway renovation project that was partially funded by the economic stimulus legislation of President Obama back in 2009. In October of 2009, an ecologist identified a plant growing in a concrete-bound median strip along Doyle Drive in the Presidio. The U.S. Department of Interior reported that in August 10 of 2010, the edition of the Federal Register, that the plant's location was directly in the footprint of a roadway improvement project designed to upgrade the seismic and structural integrity of the south access to the Golden Gate Bridge. And the translocation of the, and they name this fancy name about this plant, one plant, to an active native plant management area of the Presidio was accomplished apparently successful, according to the plan, in January 23 of 2010. Now, the bush was a specimen of commercially cultivated species of shrub that can be purchased from nurseries for as little as $15 a plant, fifteen ninety eight to be specific. The particular plant in question, however, was discovered in the midst of city of San Francisco in the median strip of a highway, and it was deemed to be the last example of the species in the wild. In the wild? San Francisco, prior to discovery of this wild Franciscan Mantazanita, whatever it is, the plant had been considered extinct for as long as 62 years. Extinct, that is, outside of people's yards and botanical gardens. Before that, the bush had grown in the wild in two cemeteries in San Francisco's Richmond District, as well as on Mount Davidson, a peak in the middle of San Francisco. The Department of Interior said that there had been also unconfirmed sightings of the shrub in the city's Head ashbury District, an area that became famous in the 60s as a centerpiece of the psychedelic hippie movement. But there you have it, folks. We have people willing to pick to dig up one plant and transplant it somewhere else, $205,075 to move one shrub from the pathway of the freeway. Folks, the Bible talks about those who sought to be wise became fools because you take the source of wisdom and understanding, our very God, who has promised wisdom if we ask for it. Some of these people I don't think even know that God exists, much less someone that could give them wisdom and understanding. Life News reports almost 900 New Zealand women hospitalized for botched abortions. Our friends in New Zealand today, I know they're listening. Almost 900 New Zealand women hospitalized for botched abortions. A total of 877 women were admitted to the hospital in New Zealand between 2009 and 11 for the treatment of complications following abortions. The total number of bedside, or I should say bed days, total 1,047. These important statistics reveal that the abortions not only kill an unborn child, but can result in damage to a woman's health. New Zealand, we're praying for you. We would uh, look forward to a phone call. Okay, a couple more things. 
Interestingly, our president, Mr. Obama, raised money, according to World Net Daily's article. He did speeches for Palestinian refugees called Code for Israel's Destruction. Mr. Obama raised money for Islamic causes. Now, this is written by Aaron Klein. He's the senior staff reporter and Jerusalem bureau chief of the World Net Daily. He also hosts Aaron Klein Investigative Radio on New York's WABC Radio. He is his latest book in the New York Times bestselling list, The Manchurian President, Barack Obama's Ties to Communists and Socialists and Other Anti-American Extremists. But here it is, Jerusalem, back in, ni- in the 1990s, Barack Obama spoke at a fundraiser for the Palestinians living in what the United Nations terms refugee camps, as World Net Daily was the first to report. Palestinians have long demanded the right of return for millions of refugees, a formula Israeli officials across political spectrum warn is the code for Israel's destruction by flooding the Jewish state with millions of Muslim Arabs, thereby changing its demographics. And as President Obama has faced criticism of his stance on Israel, including his unprecedented call for the complicate uh, or for a, compli- a complete halt to Jewish construction in the eastern sections of Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria, as precondition for talks with the Palestinians. Mr. Obama has hailed his presidential track record on the Jewish state, touting continued financial aid and loan guarantees to Israel. Such standard funding falls mostly within the purview of Congress, however. Well, there you have it. Situations before us, Muslim voters, according to some of this news, could easily swing the election. Al, uh, Richard Allen Green of CNN reported that the number of Muslims in the United States is tiny, less than one in 100 Americans, but their votes could sway the results of the presidential election in November, a new study says. That's because they are concentrated in a number of key swing states. Uh, take Florida, for example, the state that famously swung the 2000 presidential election for George W. Bush over Al Gore. Bush won by 537 votes, while a get-out-the-vote phone bank contacted 23,000 Muslims in one day during elections in 2008. Do we have reason to be concerned for our country and our world? I think so. And uh, we're going to open our phone lines and talk about issues that concern you. Maybe there are other issues you've been seeing in the news. Uh, Of course, the... the, uh, slanderous words or insulting words that have been raised by a a woman who uh, was uh, making some remarks regarding uh, Mr. Romney's wife being uh, had never worked a day in her life, even though she's a a parent of five boys. Interesting stuff. We'll open our phone lines right now. Our telephone number is 800-733-9829. Join us in conversation. Many churches are abandoning the old hymns of the faith. Yet these very hymns are a rich treasure trove of biblical truth, and unless we pass them on to the next generation, they will be lost. In the book, Then Sings My Soul, Volume 3, author Robert Morgan provides more than 50 devotional-style stories about hymns through the ages. You'll learn the stories and backgrounds to the hymns that have blessed us, including It Is Well With My Soul, In Times Like These, How Great Thou Art, The Old Rugged Cross, and many more. The book also includes the music for each of the hymns, spanning over many decades. It's ideal for family devotions and for personal enrichment. To obtain your copy of Then Sings My Soul, Volume 3, send a donation of $23 or more to VCY America, 3434 West Kilbourne Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53208. To make your donation by phone, call 1-800-729-9829, 1-800-729-9829.
And welcome back to Crosstalk, where we're taking your calls on these and many other issues that have occurred this past week. Many of you follow the news in your local areas, your regional areas, and uh, we want to give you an opportunity to address them. Let's go right now to Ringo, Georgia, and talk with Doug. And Doug, you're on the air. Okay, I'm going to make a comment about those diesels. The same <laughs> di- <laughs> oh, man. The same diesel that's in those school buses that the Bluebird school buses are in the Dodge pickup trucks, the very same ones. Yep. Hey, I, I, I've got about 400,000 miles under my belt driving <laughs> driving a PD-4104, if you know what those are. No, no, I don't. <laughs> That's an old Greyhound. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and we used to put number two in those, and uh, yeah. that, oh, that yeah. stuff was wretched. Uh-huh. But but that's strange. They're the same these next thing. And, and God knows up there north they shut them things down there. What is it, 20 below? They never get them started again. That's right. <laughs> okay, uh, my man. Take care. God bless you. Thanks for calling, Doug. Ringgold, Georgia. From there we go to uh, make it Atlanta, Georgia. We're going to talk with Joseph. Joseph, you're on the air. Hello, Thank Joseph. You from your uh, thoughts on Barack Obama just now, I'm guessing you're for the whole soul slaughter. Of the Palestinians by the Jewish state? No, I'm not for the slaughter of any any Jewish people. No, for the Palestinians by the Jewish state. Well, uh, I'm not. I'm not for the slaughter. I mean, it's it is the man uh, who we know so well as uh, the head of Iran that wants to kill all the Jews. So I don't. Who said anything about that? No, he doesn't. Oh, well, he sure does. He like, sure does, sir. He has he has said that Israel has no right to exist and should be pushed into the Mediterranean Sea. I'm so, I'm kind of concerned about that. I understand. Well, sir, I don't think you're on the right on the same page with us. I'm on the same page, all right. Okay, well, I'm for an antichrist nation who wants to does slaughter Palestinians on a daily basis. Okay, you hate the Jews, and then. you're for that. You hate the Jews, right? Oh, that's right. Okay, I figured so. Well, Jew haters every once in a while show up on this program, but at this point in time, you know, you and God are going to have to deal with this issue. Uh, but uh, again, we have anti-Semitics that show up and they call themselves Christians. Kind of interesting. Thank you so much for your call, Joseph. Let's uh, move along here. We're going to go to Monroe, Wisconsin, and uh, Brian, you're on the air. Hello, Brian. Hello. You're on the air. I uh, enjoy your show. I just wanted to uh, talk about the, uh, the idling of semi trucks uh, that you mentioned. Sure. Uh, that's been illegal uh, out east and out in the west coast for quite some time now. I see. For, for the trucks to idle. And, uh, the weird hypocrisy here is that uh, PETA filed a lawsuit that uh, if you have a pet in the truck, you're allowed to idle it because it's uh, inhumane to subject <laughs> a pet to that sort of. Uh, you have got to be kidding! If, if to keep the pet warm or with an air conditioner cool, if, as long as there's a critter in there, then it's okay. Yep, then it's okay. But the truck driver, it, you can go ahead and sweat. <laughs> oh my goodness, Brian! Thank you so much from Monroe, Wisconsin. We got open lines eight hundred seven three three nine eight two nine. Lorraine in Tower, Minnesota, my home country up there. Hi, Lorraine. Hi there. What would you like to share? I would like to share a definition okay. it's regarding parenthood. Uh, a parent, the dictionary says, one exercising, <laughs> excuse me, hmm. one exercising a function of the father or mother, any organism that generates another, and two, beget. And parentage is parenthood, descent or de- derivation from a source or origin. Murder is the unlawful, malicious, and intentional hmm. killing of one human by another with deliberate malice to kill. That's what murder means. And Proverbs 6, 16 and 17 tells us the thing the Lord hates. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent, innocent blood. blood. That's right. And Roman thirteen ten says, love, there's no harm to a neighbor. Mm. We are all responsible and will be accountable, and we cannot support or condone such an act. Hmm. We do. We are part of it. Lorraine, thank you so much. From Tower, Minnesota, and well said. God bless you, Lorraine. Moving along to line number three, and we were talking about the almost 900 New Zealand women that have been hospitalized for botched abortions. And I invited anyone from New Zealand to call, and right now we do have Ken on line three from New Zealand. Ken, welcome to the program. 
Uh, good morning. Yes. How are, you this, how are you this morning? Is that morning time there? It is indeed. Uh, what time of the day is it there? It is uh, just after 7.30 on Saturday. Okay. You're ahead of us. Yes, You're we are. De- well, God Behind bless you. you in the news, though. We, we, hadn't, we had not heard the, uh, the news about the botched abortions, uh, but we're not surprised. Um, around 18 months ago, I was doing some research on uh, abortions in New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the time, our nation had suffered the grief of 29 miners dying in a mining disaster. And uh, I was doing some research and found out that on average 49 New Zealanders die every day through abortion. Oh. I mean, the number is very small compared to what's in the United States, but we only have 4 million people in New Zealand, so it's, the portion is, mm. is quite large. Um, and our Prime Minister had a minute's silence, and nationwide minute silence for the 29 miners. And so we, we take opportunity to speak publicly when we can, and I raised the issue that 29 miners received a minute's silence, but 49 New Zealanders die every single day, and oh. nobody blinks an eye. It, um, it's just something that is very, very silent in New Zealand. There is one organisation which sticks up a, um, a, a billboard between our home and the capital, which says uh, abortion stops a beating heart. Mm, that's a good and it's alongside the main road, and it has had to be positioned in such a way that uh, it can't be demolished. Or <laughs> it's it's always people always try and graffiti it. But the but the pro life message in, in New Zealand is very weak. Um, uh, I know that my, my children desire to see the abolition of abortion completely, not just uh, piecemeal, but uh, always wonder at the attempts by people to, to bring in new legislation. Why, why not just uh, get rid of it completely because it's just uh, such an abhorrent thing? Well, my friend, let me just thank you for raising that issue before us. And Ken, let me, uh, there is Ken Orr, O-R-R, according to what I'm holding in my hands. is My name is Ken, short for Kenneth. Yeah, and this, the the name that I'm giving you is, unless your last name is O-R-R, is it? (laughs) No, no. Okay, well, Ken Orr, O-R-R, is the spokesman for Right to Life of New Zealand. Right. And so if you go and Google Right to Life New Zealand, uh, I think you'll find these statistics that have come to us because it, these came right from New Zealand and right. uh, were sent to us. Uh, they came through on the 9th of uh, April here at uh, 12.45 p.m. Right. Well, thank you for that. The, the, the numbers that I'd worked out 18 months ago were um, 400,000 New Zealanders have, been, have died since uh, abortion was legalized in 1976. Uh, that works out to be one tenth of our population has mm-hmm. died as a result of abortion. We need to pray for New Zealand as well, don't we, Ken? Yes, because we have an increasing Muslim population growing here as mm-hmm. well, um, and uh, we're always seeking to reach out to them. One thing we've noticed is that they always have, uh, well, not always, but but quite often they they one man is usually accompanied by two women with prams. Ken, and, let me let me make a suggestion and in that you have the internet there yes. that uh, at at seven PM Central Time Saturday, which would be I guess Sunday for you. But and I'm not sure what time of the clock. Oh this is Waleed Shubat? Waleed Shubat. Yes, He'll, yes. He he will be broadcasting live from the large uh, Waukesha Exposition Center. But I hope you'll uh, record that or take it yes, down. We we, we 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 will either record it or listen to it live because it's about midday on the Sunday. Great. Yes. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time to call. I, I kind of, when I read this, I, I hope there'd be someone responding from New Zealand, and you have been a blessing. Thank you. Thank you for your time. God bless you, Ken. Thanks so Bye. much. From New Zealand. Well, let's uh, right now uh, go to Heather in Ettrick, Wisconsin. And Heather, you're on the air. Okay. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, 
Hi. Um, I was calling about the Planned Parenthood and the abortions that are going on. Yes. Um, and about how myself, along with many other, I'm sure, thousands of Christian women, had been told by our doctors that birth control was okay because it doesn't um, abort a baby, but it prevents a pregnancy until recently doing some more research after hearing more about it. Um, it does actually abort a baby. <laughs> mm, yeah. um, and I just wanted other Christian women to be aware of that because it, you can still ovulate and have a baby. Um, it just gets starved out and your body flushes it before it can grow. Heather, thank you. Thank you so much for your call. God bless you. Moving along, Glenn in Wisconsin. Glenn, you're on the air. Okay, I'm listening to you on 98.9 out of Joma. Yes, sir. I'm not sure, so I'm glad they do. And uh, many issues. I'm an old road truck driver. Uh, concerning abortion, I never use the word abortion. I just say, tell me what's what's right about murdering innocent unborn babies. Amen. And, uh, and uh, I've had them literally in less than five minutes running. I said, the mother just they break custodian nurturer. She does it birth herself. Um, there's different DNA iris uh, pattern, uh, dental pattern. I mean, you know, and I've had them less than five minutes running, literally running. Hmm. Uh, but, uh, and the preservation of Israel, 100%. I mean, the uh, more Obama speaks, the more we need him out of office. Hmm. Uh, I, I say the more he speaks, the, the less we know. But uh, that's going back to Beacon. Uh, but on the truck driving, they came out with this, which you probably know, uh, tri-pack, which uh, uses minimal amount of fuel to while you're sitting there to keep the truck warm or cool. However, the maintenance cost is so great that many companies, mine included, are uh, no longer going to use that. But we have the what they call clean air idle. Which I'm not a mechanic. I, I, I say I'm not, but as I understand, it burns the fuel considerably more efficiently mm -hmm. to uh, uh, so that the pollutants going into the air are far less than what it used to be. Uh, don't ask me about any questions about it because, like I say, first thing I say is I'm not a mechanic. So <laughs> all right. Well, all, all I can say is the difference between a, a big uh, Caterpillar or diesel or Detroit diesel or whatever out there and uh, all big jet engines on Air Force One. Uh, that I mean, this is called uh, uh, this is called a very minuscule compared to the tons that are blown out of those jets every time they fire up. Yeah, but it's, uh, as I I could be wrong, but I, I just think about it, the bus engines that are basically the same size as truck engines. They're inside the trucks. I think they're, I think they're pretty much on the side there. Well, Glenn, I want to thank you for calling. We're up against a hard break. God bless you. Thanks for calling up so much. We're going to be right back with more calls. 800-733-9829. For the Worldview Weekend Minute, I'm Brandon House. Our website's worldviewweekend.com. Continuing on our list of 20 characteristics of false teachers embraced by the false church. Number three, false teachers openly reject truth. 2 Timothy 4.4 4 says, And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Isn't it interesting that the Bible tells us that many of the false teachers and those that follow them deliberately turn their ear away from hearing the truth? I think this goes right along with 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 through 11, where we read during the tribulation, God will give them over to this powerful delusion, so they will believe the lie. Why is God going to do this? Because it says in 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 through 11, they refuse to love the truth and be saved. In other words, they've turned their ear away from truth. So false teachers openly reject truth. I'm Brandon House for the Worldview Weekend Minute. You can visit our website at worldviewweekend.com.
And welcome back to Cross Talk. As we're coming down the home stretch here with our last eight minutes, we'll try to cover as many calls as we can. Again, uh, some of you hearing about the thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars to move one little bush. Uh, I, I tell you, I, I really, and again, I say it too often, but the inmates have taken over the asylum. That's it. Okay, we're going to go right now to Pace, Florida. Uh, and then uh, we are, let's see, yes, Gloria in Pace, Florida. Gloria, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. You're on the air, Gloria. I'm interested in, in I'm very much interested in trying to save our country. Amen. And not be slaves of another. There's a, there's a Dr. Stanley Montas. He's, he has done, spent 35 years career as an orthopedic surgeon. Talk about Stan Monteith, right? Monteith, right. Yeah, yeah, I know Stan very well. He traveled into Europe, lived in South Africa, and researched the records of men and the government that are working to bring our nation under the control of a corporate elite. Mm -hmm. Surrender our national sovereignty and enslave the people of the world. His book, Brotherhood of Darkness, should be read by everyone in our country that's interested in saving our country. That's right, Gloria. He has written a very good book. Stan Monteith is, of course, a very outspoken man for for our country, and uh, appreciate that so much. Because of our limited time, we're going to have to move right along. Uh, we're uh, going right now to Eric, who's been very patient on the line. Eric, you're on the air. Hi. How are you doing this afternoon? Just fine, sir. I, uh, first, I just want to say that I am a believer and a follower of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. And I thank him for the salvation. I thank God for sending his son to die for me on a cross, saving me from my mm -hmm. sins. Mm -hmm. I have a home in heaven when I die. Amen. Second, but second thing I want to comment, you had a caller, a couple of callers back that uh, commented on the tripack. Yes. I also am a truck driver, and the company I drive for, Auto Merrill, also has tripack on their trucks. And we're switching from the tripack unit to a different unit because of maintenance issues. Mm -hmm. If the school district in Massachusetts and the New England states would check into this, they could actually mount these units on those buses, mm -hmm. heat the bus to a comfortable temperature for the school children, as well as keep the engine oil warm, so they would not have trouble starting the engine in the winter months. That's how our company does it. They fire these tri-packs up. Are those gasoline fired? Uh, no, they're diesel fired, but they run. They're just just like that caller earlier had mm -hmm. said. Use a minimal amount of fuel. It also keeps the electrical system charged. Your batteries charged. Sure. I use it to keep the truck cool in the summer, warm in the winter. I've got a TV and phone and refrigerator in the truck. So while the truck's off, the tri pack runs and it keeps the electrical system charged, um, and it keeps the truck warm. So when I get in it in the middle of January and it's 15 degrees, it's warm and ready to go. Well, you know, the, the thing on that, Eric, is that the uh, here they are trying to, to uh, file, I mean, this is absolutely unbelievable, a fines of $438,000 uh, because, and yet no qualms about firing up the big jet and blowing our sky full of uh, residue there. Thanks so much for the call, Eric. Got to run. Bye bye, and we move right along to Fort Scott, Kansas. And Tom, you're on the air. Yes, how are you today? Just fine, sir. Well, I was just wondering, has the EPA got a hold of Obama about his daughters taking a trip in the Air Force One to Africa? <laughs> I just want to let that go and see what you think. Uh, good question, sir. Thanks. I wish I had the answer, Tom. Thanks for raising it though today. We need to know about those things. Let's go to Dawn in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Dawn, you're on the air. Um, I just w was thinking about this Trayvon Martin um, situation. Firstly, mm -hmm. my heart goes out to the family that did lose a son. It's yes. a very grievous situation. And he could have been any color. I mean, a person could have been any color that attacked another person. And... I you know, the law enforcement at first did not press charges on this man because 
he defended his life, that he had a right to defend his life. It wasn't about a nation or a color. And it's very unfortunate that with all the uproar and with all the um, people coming to the streets to say that um, it was wrong what was done to Trayvon Martin, now they're prosecuting this young man. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't think I was, I, when I saw that on the news last night, I was very saddened because at what point does I, a law-abiding citizen have the right to protect themselves from people who feel they have a right to be violent, they have a right to rob you, to steal from you, to come into your home and harm you? There's something very wrong with our society when we're starting to say that we don't have a right to protect ourselves and that we turn this into a racial issue because yeah. it isn't a racial issue. It's a very sad situation that any race would have to suffer like this. It wasn't a racial issue. I saw the boy. He had a sweet face, but unfortunately, like the mom said on the t- Today Show, that something went too far. Something mm-hmm. went too far. But now, the, um, because this has become a national event, suddenly someone is going to be um, brought to court for defending their life. And eventually, are they going to try and take the, um, the Second Amendment, our rights to, to legally protect ourselves away? Well, you know, Don, one of the things that impressed me is that uh, those who are seeking advantage, looking in, I hate to say this, uh, the race card, and there are people uh, that, that uh, like Jesse Jackson and others, that have jumped onto this thing, even the president himself saying some things that inflamed the issue even more. Until any, nobody even knew the story, how do you prosecute or deal with it, even in a court of law, to determine a just evaluation of what happened? What about the threats? What about somebody saying uh, or making actions that would be a threat against you? I want to I, thank you. Thank you, Don. We're, we're, we're heading out the door. Could I comment about the NRA? About 10 seconds. Um, is this an opportunity for the president to take our gun rights away? You're asking a good question, and only time's going to tell. Don, thanks. Goodbye. Thanks for calling. And that's it for today. Thanks for joining us on a Friday. Have a blessed weekend. And again, if you're near a computer or listening to the network, listen Saturday night, 7 o'clock Central, while Eid Shubat from the VCY Rally. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. been listening to Crosstalk via satellite and the internet from BCY America. Views expressed may or may not be those of this station. For a CD of today's program, send a donation of $6 or more to BCY Take Ministry, 3434 West Kilbourne Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53208. Or download by RSS or podcast from crosstalkamerica.com. And join us again for Crosstalk.